Hello cheapskaters. I'm Kath Armstrong, creator of the Cheapskates Club, where our goal is to live life debt-free, cashed up and laughing. If this is your first time visiting our channel, welcome. And if it's not, welcome back. I'm sure you'll have questions during the show, so feel free to ask them in the comments section below me and I'll do my best to answer them for you. This is a YouTube premiere tonight and it is Tuesday the 18th of January 2022. Now before we get started please hit that thumbs up it's just underneath me here and if you are not already subscribe. Two reasons for this. First of all, this is a great channel. And second reason, we have a Sunbeam Food Lab dehydrator to give away as soon as we hit 5,000 subscribers. And we only need 1,165 subscribers. I know that sounds a lot, but honestly, it's not. And don't worry if you're not in Australia because we can't send a dehydrator overseas, if you are the lucky winner, we have that covered. We will be sending you an Amazon voucher to the value of the dehydrator. Win-win for everyone and all you have to do is subscribe. Encourage your friends and family if you think they would be interested in our channel to subscribe. As soon as we hit 5,000, that thing's out of here. So let's get started. It's summer in Australia and that means pretty much for us it is natural disaster season. Now we tend to have more natural disasters in summer than we do during the colder months of the year. Bushfires, cyclones, floods, fierce summer storms, they all cause havoc and destroy property and infrastructure. Now, just in the last few days, Western Australia has been hit with severe heat waves. Far north Queensland has suffered through a cyclone and the resulting torrential rains that have flooded the place. South Australia, Western Australia has had bushfires. It's been terrible. The town of Maryborough in Queensland, the CBD, was evacuated. The Bruce Highway which is the main north-south highway for um, North Queensland, was cut. And, you know, the sad thing is not only was it cut, but in places it was completely torn up by the flood water. That highway has been under repair for years. Some It's only just been finished and now they're going to have to start again. Here in Melbourne last week, the western suburbs were hit with ferocious thunderstorms that brought really heavy rain. The rain was so heavy that part of a shopping centre roof collapsed. It just fell in. Then there were the grass fires in um, suburban Melbourne. When homes were evacuated as they came under threat of the fire. Now we all know grass fires move really, really quickly. That threat lasted two days. Now we might think that we are safe from natural disasters because we live in the city or we live in the towns, we're on a hill or we have clear land around us or whatever reason. We just tend to get them different times of the year to our northern hemisphere neighbours. The weather is changing. Things are hmm, mixing up. So bug out bags should be a part of our preparing. I joke with Wayne and friends that we go four wheel driving and camping with that I could be packed and ready to back out of the driveway in under 30 minutes if a trip comes up on short notice. It's not a joke. It's true. I can be because I plan ahead. Because after every trip, I restock and repack our bags and I restock and repack the camper, ready to go again. So in the time it would take Wayne to 
back the car up, hitch up the camper and plug everything in, I've pulled out our bags, I've loaded the fridge with some food, emptied the house fridge if nobody's home, I've closed all the windows, made sure they're locked, locked the back door and all I have to do is pull the front door lock as I go leave. Everything's then put in the car, front door's shut and locked and we can back out of the driveway and it is always under 30 minutes. So if you have to evacuate in an emergency, be it bushfire, flood, cyclone, whatever, can you do it in under 30 minutes? Can you be prepared to just pick up and go? I would suggest that if you are leaving for that sort of emergency fire, flood, cyclone, to turn the power off at the meter box. Only do it if you are evacuating though, because it will turn off your fridge and freezer. And you don't want to come home to a defrosted fridge and freezer full of stinky food. Australia has seen some really horrible weather in the last 20 months. It's, it's been horrific. We've had extreme heat waves that have caused mass blackouts. We've had bushfires that have wiped out whole towns. We've had a collapse of society as the communities involved suffer because they weren't prepared. Then there were the floods last year. Western Australia had the worst bushfire summer in living memory. Melbourne was hit by a dreadful storm that took out power for weeks, weeks, people, up to six weeks for some people before they got their power restored. Now, all of this means that people have had to pack up and leave their homes, often with very, very little notice and not knowing when or even what they will come back to. You may well be wondering what this has to do with living debt-free and cashed up. Wonder away. My question is, if you had just 30 minutes notice to evacuate your home and you didn't know when you'd be back and you didn't know what state it would be in when you came back, as a cheapskater, are you ready? Would you be able to pack the necessities at last, enough for at least three days? Now, that time frame is standard before disaster relief may be available. And I will expand on that in, in a moment. Would you know what to pack? In a panic, would you know exactly what you need? Do you know how much water to pack for three days? Do you have shelf-stable food that will last you for three days that doesn't need to be cooked? Do you have enough for everyone in your family or everyone in your household? Do you have a bug-out bag for each of your pets? I'm going to go out on a limb here and suggest that three days is absolutely nowhere near enough of anything in a disaster. Whether you evacuate or are able to stay in your home with limited resources. If you are able to stay in your own home, do you have enough food to last um, for at least a month? without having to go to the shop, without getting any assistance from a relief agency, any food parcels, anything like that. And yes, I, I am saying at least a month. Now, I don't like being told what to do. Anything, if you tell me I have to do it, I get my back up. And I try really, really hard to not tell you what to do because 
I trust that you are all capable of making up your own mind. You all know your own circumstances. You can make up your own mind and come up with your own plans. I hope that I can guide you. But this time, I am saying at least one month of food. And not just food, but medicines if you take them and pet needs if you have pets for your entire household. That is the bare minimum we should all be looking to have in our homes. Do you have some cash on hand? It doesn't have to be a lot, maybe enough to get you by for a week. Do you have a means of cooking that doesn't need electricity or mains gas? Could be barbecue, could be portable um, gas stoves, a companion stove or similar. Is there some way you can charge your phone or tablet without using electricity? And don't think that you can just jump in the car and plug it in and that'll be the answer. What if you can't drive anywhere? Because if you're not driving, the car battery is going to go flat, especially if you're going to use it for charging something. What if the fuel in your car is all you have and all you are likely to get for a while? You don't want to waste it running the car just to charge a phone or a tablet. It makes sense if you live in the mountains, in the country, in the bushy areas of the city like we do, in the tropics, or pretty much anywhere in Australia, <laughs> at least to be ready to um, evacuate it if needed quickly. Now, I just want to show you one thing. I just thought of it then, and I just happened to have it here on my desk. With the charging thing, we all, everyone in our family this year, got one of these little duties. It's a little portable solar charger. Now, this is mine. I haven't opened it yet, but the kids and Wayne have opened theirs, and they've all used them. This was $15 from Kmart, and it works. Wayne has used it to charge his phone and his tablet. It works. It's portable. It's really, it's light. It's not going to be too heavy to carry. Solar. So it will charge itself, and it comes with a little USB cable to plug into whatever you need to charge. That sort of thing, we all need to have at least one in a house or something similar. Now, they're all over the place. Um, but I just saw it there in the corner of my eye on the desk. I thought, oh, I was just talking about that. So that's it. I'm not pushing that brand or anything in it in any way. But that sort of thing is what we need for batteries, for torches, all sorts of things. I'll talk more about those in just a moment if you're wondering what to use for a bug out bag any bag you can easily carry that will hold your belongings um, it will do now the ideal is a backpack now obviously because if you need to walk it'll keep your arms and hands free and it just it isn't as tiring to carry. You've got it on your back. It's easy to do. But any bag will do as long as you can carry it. And that's the criteria for a bug out bag. You must be able to carry it. The children must be able to carry their own. So you don't pack them up chock full of heavy things. Now, in our personal bags, and this is what we take away with us if we go away for a weekend, a week, a month, six weeks, whatever. This is what we take and it is in our bags all the time. We have seven sets of underwear and socks. We have four changes of clothes. So T-shirts, jumper, trousers or shorts, a pair of thongs or surf shoes. We have a hat and sunglasses. Now they don't stay in the bag because they're always in the car, but we make sure we have them. We also have a small toiletry bag that has a toothbrush, toothpaste, a comb, 
soap and hard soap in a container is better than liquid soap. Shampoo, conditioner if you use it, deodorant, sunblock, face washer, a small towel, wet wipes. Never go anywhere without the wet wipes and a personal first aid kit. That all fits into just a small bag. You don't take the giant litre bottles of shampoo. Um, personal medications, enough for a week. Now, because we have the camper, we have a kitchen box. And in that we have um, two small gas stoves with spare gas bottles. We have a gas lighter. We have waterproof matches. We have canned and dried foods to make meals. Bug spray. I recommend the green Bushmans. Use what you like. We also have a camp oven and a frying pan and a small saucepan. Then because there's only two of us, we've got two plates, two bowls, two mugs, two knives, two forks, two spoons. A small bottle of dishwashing liquid, a scrub sponge, a tea towel, a pair of tongs, a sharp knife, foil and baking paper are invaluable, especially if you don't have water to wash up. Paper towel, toilet paper, hand sanitizer, hand cream. You will you will love the hand cream. Sunblock, a chapstick, things like that. We carry our driver's license, our Medicare card, and an ATM card with us. No, they're with us all the time. Now, in terms of evacuating, I've done a swap with a friend and she has a box, a locked box, with copies of all our important documents in it and I have the same with their stuff here. Now, we've also copied everything that's important to a USB and it lives in my personal bag. And it has things like copies of the birth certificates, the bank account information, emergency contacts, important numbers we might need, um, tax file number, passport numbers, where our wills are, the insurance information, etc., etc., etc. Because all that stuff, when you're in a mad panic, that does not pop into your mind. It tends to leave. So we keep them like that so we don't have to worry about picking anything like that up when we're leaving in a hurry. Now, we also have a little safe that stores copies, hard copies of those things here at home. That might be something that you want to look into. If you do, I would suggest make sure it's fireproof for a good many hours and get one that you can actually cement or bolt to the floor. Now, right now, we don't have pets. But when we did, I had a box with enough food for a week with spare food bowls, some old towels and blankets, a box of kitty litter because we had two cats, ready to just pick up and go. It would just get tossed into the back of the car. Now, that was really good when we were going away because we were taking the cats to be looked after. And I have to say, it was the one time I splurged on those little foil pouches of cat food. But they're lighter and easier to carry than tins easier to open, far too expensive to use all the time. But for that situation, when they're not used all the time, they were ideal. Now, that lived in the laundry cupboard, and it was really easy. You just open the cupboard, pulled it out, and off it went. As I said, we never had to use it to evacuate, but it did come in handy when we were taking them to be cat sat if we were going away. Now, we also have wind-up torches, brilliant little things. They were $5 each from Kmart a few years ago. More than a few years ago, I think all the kids were still at school. They are brilliant little things. And we have a wind-up radio so that we don't need to rely on batteries. Now, it's been suggested that everyone in a fire or cyclone zone should have a battery-operated radio. And that's fine if you can get one. But then you need to keep on top of the batteries. If you're not using the radio, you need to take them out because they might corrode and ruin the radio and then it's a waste. That means that you need, um, you need to keep fresh spare batteries handy to put into it or use it all the time so that you remember. 
I'd look for a wind-up radio. I think they're a much better option simply because you don't need to worry about batteries or power. Now, I know there are solar radios around now, little portable solar, solar radios, probably not much bigger than this little thing from what I can tell. Um, but they're rather expensive <laughs> when I last checked because I thought, oh, that might be something we could use for our base camping when we're away. So I last checked, they were rather expensive and the solar torches were too. So you might want to do some research. They could well have come down in price. I don't know because I honestly haven't looked for them. We, our wind-up one works. If it's not broken, why fix it? Speaking of solar, we also um, have solar phone chargers um, that just do our phones. They're little square things that we got. And they are really handy. Even at home, we use them. Why pay for electricity if you don't need to? And if the electricity is out and often in a disaster of, you know, a natural kind, the electricity is the first thing to go out. Having some sort of solar charging ability is great. Um, of course, if we're travelling in, in the car, we just charge the phones and the cameras and the tablets and things in the car while we're travelling. But if you're base camping, no, no car travel means no tra charging. If you're in an evacuation centre, you know, there's going to be a limited amount of power points if there's power. So try and be a little self-sufficient. I think we need to be more self-reliant. We need to understand that we have to look after ourselves. We can't count on help coming we can't count on when help arrives that it will actually have what we need so as adults we need to be responsible for ourselves just like we need to be responsible for paying our debt we need to be responsible for looking after ourselves in an emergency situation sorry it's just the way i feel you know if you can by all means, sit at home and go, someone will come and save me, someone will come and save me, someone will come and save me as you fade away from thirst because there's no clean water. Okay. If you're going to look for um, solar charges and things, do what you normally do and do your research. Then search online and... and um, find the best deal that fits your needs. Now we also have, I just mentioned water, we also have a 90 litre water, uh, water bladder in our four wheel drive. Now we keep that clean and filled all year round. Now this gives us nine days of water for the two of us. Very important. You can go without food for a long time but you can't go without clean water. For very long at all. Um, I mentioned last week that I keep um, both cars at least three quarters full of fuel. I will keep doing that. It means I fill up every week but it also means that in an emergency we would have enough fuel to get us a few hundred kilometres if we need to go that far. So with all of this and all of that we're pretty well set up. And we can be virtually self-sufficient, so we don't have to go to an evacuation centre. We have a camper, so we're covered for accommodation. But if you don't have a camper or a caravan, do you have a tent that you can use? doesn't have to be fancy. doesn't have to be whiz-bang expensive or anything. Just a small tent, a small dome tent that costs under a hundred dollars because honestly even if you ended up in an evacuation center being able to put up a small tent will give you some privacy it will get you away from everybody else breathing on you <laughs> and that's just a feeling it's not that it happens 
it will give you some privacy. Do you have um, sleeping bags and mats or self-inflating mattresses? Blow-up pillows are really good to keep in your bug-out bag. They don't take up a lot of space, but they sure make sleeping on the ground or a bench or sitting up more comfortable. And, you know, again, camping stores, disposals, anywhere that sells camping supplies usually has them. Some pharmacies carry them. They're not very expensive. Now, back to water. Do you have some water stored in jugs or bottles that you just grab and go? Now, the rule of thumb is five litres per person per day at a minimum. This won't give you anything to waste, but you'll have two litres for drinking, and that is important. And that gives you a litre for personal hygiene, washing your face, brushing your teeth, rinsing off your hands or whatever. And it leaves two litres for cooking, washing up and so on. So it's not a lot of water. But, you know, five litres of water is five kilos. So you need to think about that and how you're going to carry it. The other thing is disposable plates, cups, cutlery. They take up space if you have to carry them. But if you are short on water, they're ideal. If you're in a car, then that's fine. If you're walking, stick to your um, regular plastic cups and plates. I've heard it said, and I know that people whinge and whine, so you shouldn't buy disposals, blah, 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 blah. It's bad for the environment, blah, 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 blah. In an emergency, they are ideal. In an emergency, you will be grateful for paper plates and paper cups and bamboo cutlery. It'll make life that much easier for you. Did I mention fire starters? Did I have fire starters on my list? I was just thinking because I was about to say those things can be burnt. Because in an emergency like that, in some sort of natural disaster situation, there's probably not going to be a garbage collection. It could be there is no sewer working. I don't know what it could be. So you need to be able to take care of your rubbish yourself. Look, I don't know what the next disaster is going to be. I just know that there will be one. It could be a flood. It could be a fire. It could be an earthquake or even a tsunami like Tonga has just experienced. And we all had the whole east coast of Australia was under a tsunami, even down to Tasmania was under a tsunami alert um, on Saturday night and Sunday morning. Thankfully, it amounted to nothing for us. But it could have been something dangerous. It could have been a disaster. Would we have been ready? You know, it doesn't have to be something like that. The next disaster could just be the pipes breaking and flooding the house. But at some point in time, we are all going to face a disaster of some kind. If we're alive, that's what's going to happen. So being prepared, even if it is just with a list of what to pack, what to turn off, and um, where to go can save you money, it will save you time and energy, but more importantly, it could just save your life. These are just a few of my thoughts on evacuating. I have a lot more. <laughs> um, I hope and pray that we never have to evacuate for a disaster like that. And that you never have to either. But we live in Australia, the best country in the world. So the chances are fairly high that at some time we will need to just pack up and go in a hurry. 
So it's reassuring to know that we are prepared and that we can be gone in just a few minutes. If you had to evacuate in a hurry, would you have everything you need close at hand, ready to go? Take some time to think about having an evacuation plan. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be compli complicated. Think about putting a couple of bug out bags together and keep them somewhere where you can just pick them up and go without thinking about it. Because in an emergency, the sooner you can be out the door and away to somewhere safe, the better, the better your chances are. And that's just the truth. Remember, what do we say? We say be prepared, not scared. And for a natural disaster scenario, or even a non-natural disaster scenario, if we are prepared, we don't need to be scared. Thank you for watching tonight. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, click that subscribe button and then the little bell next to it. And you'll be notified every time we upload a video or go live. When we get to 5,000 subscribers, I will be drawing the Sunbeam, Sunbeam Master Series Food Lab Electronic Dehydrator. I'm really excited about this. I'll be back next week, hopefully live, <laughs> with another Cheapskates show on something that's going to blow your mind, I'm sure. Thank you for joining me tonight, everyone. Have a good week. Stay safe and happy cheapskating.